Hello YouTubers, Hemitech, Hemitechnoid here, and today I'm going to talk about this new acquisition I got from eBay. It's a Sony TCK81, and this is a very, very nice deck. It's a three-head cassette deck, and it came out in 1980, and it was Sony's top-of-the-line model at the time. And it was it had all the features, you know, three heads, bias calibration, separate record level calibrations. Uh, it wasn't anything super fancy. I mean, it did not have automatic reverse. It didn't have uh, track seek or anything like that that they tried to add on to cassettes to make them more, you know, fun. But uh, it has Dolby B, and it has metal tape capability to record on the metal tape. But it also has a a special thing of the the bias. It has a special low position, so you can use really crappy, low bias tapes and make really fantastic, good recordings. Now, typically, you're not going to put your best recordings on crappy tape, but the thing is, you know, sometimes you want to record off the radio, maybe, or there's some, there's some old record that you have that you don't care if to scratch it or what. But, uh, yeah, old crappy tapes, you can make them sound pristine and beautiful on this thing. So uh, what I'm going to do is today I'm going to demonstrate how you calibrate this guy and I'm going to do a little demo on uh, making a, a tape uh, with my little mp3 player being the source. So first off, what I did, well first off, when you get a cassette deck through eBay, chances are it's going to be beat up a little bit. And this one was. I mean, I blame that partly on the fact that the guy who sent it to me didn't pack it very good so it dented on the side in the back. It got a couple dents in the metal case, but it d didn't hurt anything electronically or mechanically to the machine. The machine works fine. But uh, I wanted to put it through some of the cleaning things that I that I do to, to my regular cassette decks. I wanted to make sure that it was up to snuff, you know, top-notch clean and all that. So what you do, and I'm going to show you some of the things I use. Uh, first off, what you do is you get this uh, isopropyl alcohol and you see it's 99.9% .9 pure. That's the good stuff. You want 99.9% .9 pure isopropyl, and that'll get in there and clean your heads and your paint rollers, okay? And once you got your paint roller cleaned, you know, sometimes they get old, and they, get, they don't get so good when they're old. So what you want to do is get some of this rubber renew, all right? Get the rubber renew and put that on your paint rollers, and let it soak in and that kind of gives it a new a new uh, conditioning to the rubber it makes it like new almost you know as best you can do without replacing them and then if you have any scratchy pots or anything scratchy volume controls that scratchy uh, bias adjustments and such you get some of this super contact cleaner this is the best stuff I, I this is the best stuff I don't I don't get a, a, a cutback from this stuff but you know I'm not being sponsored by it, but this stuff is good is really good it's like liquid gold and you don't have to use very much you don't have to use much at all and then uh, if you're going to do the top-notch repair what you need to do is replace the belts and that's what I did on this baby I replaced the belts it's got uh, three main belts one for the uh, take up idler reel and two for the capstans because this is a dual capstan machine it has a capstan for the take up and a cap capstan for the supply and it gives stability to the tape so it has very low wow and flutter okay so then and also you should know if you're going to go and change the change the, um, the belts you need a tool like this this tool was invaluable to me when I changed the belts on this machine. It was invaluable. I, if I did not have this tool, I could not have achieved what I did. So anyway, get a tool like that. And I recommend getting your parts from Vintage Electronics. They're online. They have all the old belts and tools you need to, ch to fix your cassettes. So anyway, on with the demonstration. And this is a very low noise, it's a low noise tape, it's not a very high end tape, it's a Sony tape, okay, it is a Sony, so this deck is kind of made for Sony tapes, but, but you can adjust them to others, but this is just an old Sony tape, a low bias, no high bias, no chrome, no nothing, just low noise. So I'm putting it in there, and what you got to do is when you're calibrating this thing, first thing you want to do to calibrate is you put it in this cal button here, you put it into bias, okay? And then get the machine ready to record, and I'm doing that right now, okay? 
and then you hit off of pause and then you see the levels all right and you adjust the bias levels until the line up until they're identical okay and then you get those to line up and then you switch the the cowboy sometimes it's tricky but you get them to line up as best you can and then you turn it to record cow tone and then these two knobs here are for the record cow tone and you can change them so you turn it down or you can turn it back up okay and what you want them to do is be lined up on the zeros just like that and you see you've got these dials here these knobs you want to make sure that the dolby is off when you're doing your cow make sure the dolby's off and then make sure that your eq and your bias buttons are set to the right bias and these are both set to low which is the tape quality on this is low low quality tape and if you change the bias switch you'll notice how the bias is affected watch it right now it is set to both are the same level if i do this well it goes way down and it goes even more down when i put it on high high bias tape so that is very critical that you have your bias switch in the right position okay and one thing about this deck is when you do the calibration it automatically uh, mutes any output to the back there's no you can't hear anything going on nothing on the tape if you rewind it and then play it back you can hear but if you know during the process it mutes the output so it, you don't get anything going over your speakers or through your headphones so now what i'm going to do is it's still recording it's erasing i'm going to hit the uh next button on my mp3 player and we're going to hear a song as it's being recorded Okay, I want to point out before I go any further that that was in the source position, okay? Now, we, go, we when you switch between tape and source, that is when you tell what's going on on the tape. So if you want to know what's going on the tape, you put it to tape. So now I'm going to put it onto tape, and you'll hear what's on the tape now. Yeah, I might be recording it a little hot, so you can hear the little bit of distortion, but this is a low noise tape. So anyway, um, yeah, I'm going to let it play some more, and I'll switch between the source and the uh, tape. Okay, that's tape. That's source. And that's tape. And that's without Dolby on. I'm going to turn on the Dolby now. And if you know it, you can fine tune the bias to get a little more crispness. Okay, so yeah, that is how you calibrate and how you make a good recording on a cheapy, cheapy tape. And the, the same can be done for better tapes. I'm not going to go into that now. But yeah, and that now I've got the Dolby turned on, so you, the noise reduction is a bit better. But uh, as it goes, this is a very good deck. It was top of the, top of the line in uh, 1980. And with new belts and cleaned up and everything, it should perform for several more years with very good results. So uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video, my demo on the TCK81, Sony's top of the line deck. And until next time, see you later.